Hi guys, Jason here, Jason's Trucking Info. And in this video, I'm just going to kind of talk about how trucking is today versus how it was several years ago when I first got in the industry. It used to be that you didn't have all these fancy gizmos on the truck keeping an eye on you. You didn't have all these lane sensors and proximity sensors that would go off every time you do something and the last several years they've been starting to put cameras in the trucks sometimes just going forward sometimes they're going forward and on you and depending on the company you work for would depend on how much they catch stuff and how sensitive they make it Alan Ritchie was the first company I dealt with cameras at and that was just in the last year or two that I worked there and theirs was the most sensitive that I've dealt with so far. The, the Bay and Bay and um, Sierra England have been not as sensitive as cameras. Um, Alan Ritchie's was set up to talk to you and it would talk to you and if, if you even if it even thought you were doing something, it would tell you you were distracted driving or whatever. So I got my first hand experience with cameras with one of the strictest camera systems that there was. And they dialed it down a little bit. But even my own boss, if he wore sunglasses, it would be going off on him. My co-driver, if she squinted while she drove, it thought she was driving tired and would tell her she was driving distracted. Um, anything I mean it's just really strict and it would talk to you and say stuff to you and um, they only gave you a few seconds to change what you were doing or it would send an alarm back to your company and you'd get some sort of violation with your company all kinds of crazy stuff with this stuff back in the day we didn't have all that stuff back in the day we didn't have all that stuff and mainly you just have to worry about driving your hours and not getting speeding tickets or getting violations with the DOT and just trying to keep your nose clean, not getting in accidents and stuff like that and trying to be on time to all your pickups and deliveries. The industry has changed a lot in those respects and it seems like drivers are getting a lot more leeway in some ways. A lot of companies are giving drivers a lot more say in stopping just because it's snowing and not chaining up. Most drivers today don't even know how to chain up and don't even get taught. It's crazy that every driver should know how to chain up. If you don't know how to chain up, my best video on chaining up is my an example how to chain up video. Watch that video that shows you exactly how to chain up in Colorado. And I chain up according to the chain laws in Colorado in that video. And that is, um, it's got a lot of talking in the front, a lot of talking in the back of it. But the stuff in the middle is me doing a, a voiceover on top of the um, GoPro footage I took in that video. So, watch that video if you want to get some idea as to how to chain. My other video, the, for the my other chaining videos, which is a three-part chaining video, um, is very longish, and I did some stuff wrong in that video, in the, that three-part video. Um, but I'm still leaving it up so that people can get some sort of idea what the realities are of chaining up. Being a truck driver today is very interesting in how these companies just are... It doesn't seem like a lot of these companies know what they're doing. The way they're dispatching you and doing stuff just doesn't seem to make sense they're not giving you enough time cushion or they're giving you 
so much time cushion that you're getting places early and then having to sit especially if you're on live loads and live unloads you can't show up more than an hour or two early in on in most places most of these places with the live loads and live unloads are sticklers for their appointment times and won't let you be more than so early and every every one of these companies is just a little bit different so you gotta just adapt and these days these companies are all switching over to all automatic trucks and drivers today don't have to learn how to shift a truck they don't have any idea of what it's like to have to shift a truck all they have to do is try to figure out how to drive an automatic truck in the mountains and in um, steep mount or uh, steep hills and stuff and learning how to use the engine brake and learning how to use all this new technology that's come out these last few years where the automatics and stuff are coming out and depending on who you work for you might have an APU on your truck you might have an EPU you might have opti idle or the APU taught to use while you're parked for your 10 hour breaks or your 34 um, it's just crazy how everything works and how much leniency you get in some respect respects and it just seems like a lot of these way stations aren't even pulling you in There's, most of these companies are having the pre-pass stuff which is good and yet that pre-pass is pretty much not making most people pull in and a lot of times it seems like depending on what your personal driving record is and what the company's driving record is those CA points either personally or company wide can affect you as to whether you're getting pulled in and getting inspections a lot and then looking taking a look at what you're doing and if you've got a good driving record and your company's got a decent driving record you hardly ever get pulled in for an inspection and as long as you're doing everything right doing your pre-trips and making sure that your tires and your lights and all the red flags that give you away are done right making sure your tandems are in the right spot when you when you do roll over the scale a lot of these scales around the country depending on where you're driving in the in the country are being very lenient it seems like it just depends on where you go to though and who's on duty at the time so being a truck driver today is very different from when I first learned it just seems like some of these companies are cracking down safety wise and they're going off of what their computers tell them with these radars that on the truck that are lane sensors and stuff which in my experience are very inaccurate and Sierra England has tried to say that their um, drive wise uh, that is connected to their ELD is very accurate and I have found it to be very inaccurate in several places where there is no posted sign saying that the speed limits are lower and this thing and even my trucker's GPS my Rand McNally 750 will try to tell me that the speed limit is only 55 and the only sign posted for a good half hour or longer depending on where I've been at in some of these places tries to tell me that the truck speed limit is only 55 and I get dinged for a critical event because I'm not driving the uh, 55 because I'm not going to slow down just because 
these things are telling me. I'm going to drive according to the actual speed limits and it's getting outlandish and trying to prove to your company well you need to relook at re look into that and trying to call a bigger company like either Sear England or some of these companies getting someone on the phone to tell them hey you're, this is wrong it's not that speed there even my trucker's GPS is trying to tell me that it's that speed but there is no posted speed no posted sign saying that truckers have to go a lower speed in those areas so the technology although I believe the technology is leading to better things in the long run but they the technology needs to be applied in the right ways and the way that this technology is being applied I believe in a lot of respects is not necessarily helping the drivers to do things it's slowing the driver down and it's creating creating a lot of drivers that are not these things are set in a non-realistic way for driving there is a lot of unrealistic expectations from safety departments at these companies and some of these things are good sometimes but not other times and it's all situational and all situations are unique you have to look at each individual situation by itself and not box everything into one thing because there's so many things there's so many reasons why truckers will go over the line to try to stay away from potholes things in the road um, other truckers not staying in or vehicles cars not staying in their lanes and you have to move over and cars driving slow for no reason other truckers driving slow for no apparent reason and having to adjust for those and in certain parts of the country and at certain times of the day going through cities and wherever you're at there's all kinds of different things happening with other vehicles putting truck drivers in positions where we got to do things that these sensors and cameras on the truck don't really get the whole picture they don't see what's going on on the sides of you and, and back of you which could be the reasons why the trucker is doing things in the way that they are and sometimes the posted signs telling you what to expect if you're in unfamiliar on unfamiliar roads you don't know that you're gonna have a sharper turn than what than what you thought you were going to have so you wind up having to make um, an abrupt drop in speed or something because you couldn't tell that you're, you were going to have to sl go slower around the curve than what you thought because the posted signs don't always tell you things in time They some of these places tell you all kinds of signs like miles ahead of time and other places don't tell you till the very last second that you're gonna have to do something and sometimes they don't exactly give you the right uh, a picture of what you're gonna have to do so and a lot of that comes with experience or how many times you've been in an area driving a truck so there's all kinds of things that affect things in today and how these companies are doing things especially post COVID and post 9-11 with all this stuff that has happened with all these things that have happened in our society over these last um, 20 years have affected the way all these companies do things and the reasons why they do things and so 
and it's not always the companies that are the reasons that these companies have a bad report. These companies hire drivers and they have to have drivers and the, they just might have a lot of drivers that are at their company just giving them a bad rap where their company is doing the best they can to keep good drivers but they have felt they needed to put certain policies and procedures in place to try to cover themselves and drivers just don't do things the most safest way you know how many things how many things have we seen on such bonehead truckers and other youtuber trucker youtube truckers videos where they show all the thing all kinds of things on video drivers doing things you can't blame the company for drivers doing really stupid things where they're trying to do u-turns in very bad choice places where drivers are picking very bad places to try to get themselves out of jams or just not paying attention to what they're doing and hitting things and crash bang things up and getting themselves into trouble and you know not paying attention to what they're doing that's not the company's fault per se depending on what they're doing in my opinion these cameras and lane sensors aren't doing a thing the only thing that the cameras might do is help cover your butt when something happens if it catches the right thing on camera but these cameras don't always get the big picture and it might only show things that will get the wrong driver in trouble depending on the situation and what is going on so as a driver today it's hard to really know who to go drive th drive for and what positions to take and this is all affected by your own needs that you need to have for employment how, how long you can be gone whether you want to be home every day or every night whether you go over the road regional dedicated I mean the, there's so many options out there and so many places that you can go to work for and you just never know what you're getting yourself into you it, it you can only do so much research and stuff the only way to really know whether or not you're getting into a good company and gonna have a good deal at a company is to go work for them for a while and see how things play out and if they don't work out you can always go work for a different company but you got to be careful because if you do too many job hopping companies are going to start turning you down because companies are getting tired of constantly hiring drivers who just want to job hop all the time if you know, there's a lot of drivers out there that are constantly job hopping every so often and some companies care some companies don't it depends on the company but companies are i think trying to crack down on it so you got to be really careful and if you don't have the greatest driving record you're not going to get the greatest jobs and you're going to be dealing with a lot of crappy stuff at jobs some of the companies out there are going to find stuff in your record if you got accidents speeding tickets and whatnot on your record then you're not going to get one of the best most glamorous jobs out there it's going to be hard for you to find a place you will always find a job as a trucker with a cdl there will be somebody somewhere that will eventually hire you there are several companies out there that will hire just about anybody and don't care because they just want to fill a seat 
They want to put you on a truck and put you out there and pray and hope that you don't go out there and get in accidents and that you can, you know, do a good job for them and that you won't do the things that you did in the past. And some companies have a high rollover because they just continuously hire whoever they can and other companies out there are a little more strict and they're being a little more uh, picky about who they put in the put in their trucks and it's just the way it is it's just kind of the luck of the draw sometimes depends on what you have on your record and how long you've been driving for if you've got a lot of years of driving experience then it just depends on what kind of the stuff do you have in your background whether that's driving or otherwise if you've got a criminal record or whatever that can affect you too these companies are slowly all cracking down so that it's hard to you can't do things like you used to anymore it's getting harder and harder just to job hop around and get different jobs so you can't just you got to be careful about the job hopping you can't just quit one job and go to another eventually it catches up to you and so that's one thing I am trying not to do is job hop but um, I'm just trying to find that right um, fit and I'm still trying to decide whether CR England is that right fit just yet CR England is big enough that they have other things that I could go to if I don't like what I'm doing now I can probably still keep the same truck and just switch lanes and go do something different and that's something you got to consider if you don't like what you're doing see what else they got that you could go do there's always something else that you could go do but just be careful about changing jobs too much find out if your company has other opportunities and other things you could be doing and you know you can talk to your recruiter if you're not happy with what you're doing right now I'm running a lot but they're they're running me recaps a lot and they're running me really tight on a couple of these last runs and when they should have given me a 34 hour restart they didn't let me get it and running recaps they're running me down to the minute and if anything goes wrong I'm not even sure if I got enough time to do the whole run it's gonna be really close if I have any slops that's why I'm trying to uh, I'm not gonna run till later tonight I'm gonna try to run so that I try to go through some of these areas when the traffic is gonna hopefully be lower so that I can get through through stuff so that I hopefully don't have any slow ups and can get to my uh, my delivery and then I'll just have to sit somewhere until because I will I'll basically have just enough time to make it to my drop and then I'll just be stuck sitting somewhere for right then. <coughs> so, I don't care. As long as I have access to a bathroom, I don't care. Some of you guys are a little bit more limited and you don't have ways of cooking on your truck. You don't have ways of just pretty much... I try to set myself up on the truck and that is something you want to do if you're on the over the road thing you want to set up your truck so that you have you have food on your truck you have several different ways of cooking in case something breaks you have another way of cooking 
need to have a fridge, you need to have ways of powering everything that you bring on the truck. So, being a trucker today is definitely a different animal dealing with um, things. They've, there's a lot of new technology that didn't exist back when I first got into it. Now, a lot of these companies are using apps. There's an app for ding just about everything. Just about everything that you do today, there is an app for it. Loves has an app. Most of your trucking companies, Sierra England has an app, Bay and Bay had an app. Loves has an app, Pilot has an app. There's an app for everything you do. Everything we do in today's society is on this phone. Everything, we live and die by this phone these days. And it is crazy how much we rely on our phones these days. Back when I first was truck driving, I didn't even have a cell phone. I would, I feel like I kind of got into the cell phone deal a little bit late, but I started getting, I had my first cell phone in summer of 2003 I believe I believe it was 2003 when I got my first cell phone I got a flip phone with US Cellular in Des Moines and then I've had a cell phone ever since of one kind or another for a while there I had pre paid phones straight talk from Walmart and that wasn't too bad and I used that for a while but you gotta do what you gotta do but you gotta take into consideration all the different factors wherever you go in the trucking industry whatever you do in the trucking industry I wish you all well and hope that you guys are all out there being safe and I hope that you guys are getting enough miles or hours depending on what kind of job you're at whether or not you're over the road or doing something local some sort of line haul or or whatever you're doing there's so many different options out there for driving jobs and I don't think I could ever figure out everything that's on the list there's a lot of them and there's so many different things you could do and not only you know there is you know jobs where day cabs there's jobs with sleepers and then there's all the other things you could do you could be doing a dump truck job to, uh, helping construction crews you can there's all kinds of areas and avenues you can go with your class a cdl and different endorsements you can do and haul everything from gasoline to food to dry stuff to I mean there's just a gazillion possibilities in the trucking industry it's such a vast industry that there's all kinds of different avenues you can go if you don't like one thing go try another so there you go guys thanks for coming by and watching my video and listening to this rant and I will catch you in my next video whether that is a live feed or one of these edited videos and look forward to whatever videos I come out with next thanks for watching guys leave any comments or questions um, I'm trying to leave links to my other Jason's Creative Adventures channel go check those out and my daughter has a channel of, of her own, which is Elena's Playing Adventures. Go uh, uh, check out her videos too, or, or have your kids go check out her videos. My daughter is about, going soon to turn eight years old, and she has a small handful of videos. If I was home more, she would have a lot more. And if I decide to take a job where I'm home more, there will definitely be more videos on her channel so 
All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Catch you next video.